Okay, Chris and I drove pretty much all night, got here to New Mexico, got a Unit 16 B tag. Uh, first archery, September 1st, starts tomorrow. So anyway, we're getting dropped in the middle of the wilderness out here. So we've got some mules and horses. We're gonna be loading up and getting after it. I'm kind of excited. It's an awesome time of year to be hunting elk. You know, you're kind of, these bulls are just gonna be getting going. They're a little bit vulnerable. They're excited too. And so we're just grabbing some gear. We'll be loading up and getting out of here. See if there's any elk up there. About a 10 mile horseback ride in here. So just plodded along, up and down, went through some canyons and whatnot. We're just way back in here. Um, this is our base camp. We've got little teepees off to the side. We'll be able to sleep in those. Didn't see a lot of elk sign in here yet, so I don't know. See, it is early, but uh, it's gonna take a little work, that's for sure. We've kind of set up the tables and all the cook stove and all that, so looks like we're gonna have rain again tonight. Thunder clouds have come in. We've had lightning and thunder around us and starting to rain. So anyway, we're finishing up camp, put the lantern together and a few things, and then, uh, I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> Here comes the rain right now. So, kind of crazy, but we're hoping for good things, especially in the morning. Tomorrow's opening day. couple smaller bulls feeding out right there. We're seeing a few bulls, rags and cows and a few things. <sighs> Nothing great. I've seen a black bear and a cub couple miles away and they were covering country like crazy. Pretty tough so far, nothing phenomenal, but there's enough that it keeps you intrigued and keeps you going. Saw quite a few elk, they're feeding out there in those rollers. It's a lot of trees out there, but we can see a little bit in there. And so lots of cows, smaller bulls. We did have uh, probably a 320, 330 bull chasing cows and then multiple small bulls so anyway looks good i've heard a couple of bugles but um you know it's a little bit early but every day things can change and amp up a little bit so we'll probably be doing this routine glassing off of these knobs for the next day or two until we get a feel for what's really out there We're up and out, I'm glassing, so every day's a new day. Chris heard a bugle down along the trail, and that's about it. Real pretty all the way around. Big, pretty back in. Not over the old, like, gonna be a special bull someday. Saw that nice boy, 350 class bull. Thin, but well tails, uh, weaker front end, looks like, and young. There's some tanks on the map we're gonna go check out tonight. Probably sit water tonight. They have to water, it's so hot. So there's, you know, there's, there's a lot of elk we're not seeing and there's a lot we are seeing glimpses of. A lot of these bigger bulls are just not with the cows yet. Came in here to a pond that's on the map and it's
it's got water. So, a little bit of activity. Um, looks like mostly bulls, kind of big tracks. So, we're gonna sit here this evening. A lot of country in here. We haven't been able to glass. We can glass the tops. That's about it, so. Anyway, not a, not a ton, like I say, not a ton of fresh sign, but enough. If there wasn't any, we wouldn't be here. Stay tuned. So we got up an hour and a half earlier this morning. We're headed in, I don't know, it might be three or four miles. It's about that, I think, each way. So we're gonna go in, check some tanks, hopefully find one that's just been obliterated and sit out and kill a monster, but we'll see. I don't know, it's hot and it's dry and there's some places that don't have water, so um, sitting water seems to be the Another tactic for the next couple days anyway. Came into this tank and uh, with high hopes we've lost a couple of bulls over here. There's no sign. There's no sign. Like there's not a track in the mud. So anyway, we don't have to come back to this again, which is good. So on to the next tank. We did find uh tank prior, nothing at the tank, but then there was a dam a little lower, nothing in it, but just behind it, it's kind of a drain. There was a little bit of water there, and then we found some water in a rock pot, and uh, big rubs and stuff, but maybe one or two bulls using it. If you had the conviction it was a giant or what you were looking for, and you had him trail camera or something, you'd work it hard, but uh, it's not in the cards for just a couple of days left. Well, we put on, I think, eight miles. That tank right there is supposed to have water. One lower was supposed to have water. We'll go up just a little bit further right there and camp out. sit a tank this morning and probably be a bust but we're hoping for the best that's about it So, Frontier Outfitters. Frontier Outfitters dropped us in here and they're like, anything you need, anything you need. Well, we need a case of monsters. So, case of monsters show up. 
and they've been amazing. Right, Chris? That's right. Like a little goodness in a tough hunt. What's wrong with that? It's awesome. Gave us hope, renewed vigor. Last night I had sat and had one after dark. Slept like a baby. I'm ready. Thought we could do it and get it done. I have prior obligations. It's just time to go. It's kind of a bummer because there's giants here. Here in a week there'll be. So tomorrow morning we're being pulled out. Tonight we're gonna go sit on a water tank. We feel like it's got a best chance of something special coming in. Here we are lit last afternoon, sitting in a blind. The blind was made, luckily we didn't have to make it, but uh, it is in the right spot. Wind's a little variable coming around, but what do you do? So we got a lower pond and an upper pond. We can kind of come see what's coming into the lower pond and part of it. So we should be able to see them and stalk or something if we have to, but I think we're on the pond with the most activity. So we'll see how it goes tonight. It's last night. Unsuccessful hunts suck. <laughs> Nobody likes to be unsuccessful. We all are uh, coming on a hunt, you know, with the goal of harvesting an animal. I mean, there's a lot of other things that go along with hunting. We all like to be successful in harvesting an animal. We're not successful in this hunt. We're not gonna kill an animal. Um, some of that's by choice. We didn't chase anything. I mean, we saw 340, 350 type bulls, huge backs, young, thin bull, you know, just, Needs a couple of years, it'd be a shame to harvest him now. He may get killed before the end of the season, but he had just giant fifths and just a beautiful well tail type bull and he's gonna be awesome. It's not a total waste. There's a lot of things that you learn, you know, when going on hunts, whether you're successful or not. When you're successful, yeah, you, you get to have the confidence of drawing a bow, picking a spot, killing that animal. Um, but you still have all those experiences leading up to the harvest when you're out in the field, even if you're not successful. So you continue to learn about the animal. You learn the country, you learn water, you learn all kinds of stuff. Just all of those things are in your head and help you learn about the game, whatever it is, deer, elk, antelope, whatever you're hunting. So, you know, yeah, we're unsuccessful. Is there things that I'd do different next year if I drew the same tag? Probably. But I learned a ton, and you can't take that from me. Never a bad thing to go on a hunt. Not so fun not to be successful, but it's not necessarily the end of the world. Because knowledge it all comes together, and as you get older, you're more effective. I mean, there's just so much that's gained on every hunt that you go on and uh, it shapes you into the hunter that you are and, and whatnot. So although it's terrible, we're unsuccessful, and the, and the hunt was a complete waste, we gained a lot from it, and it'll definitely help us be successful in the future.